right, I'm Rick Gillis. Thank you for being here. Welcome to job, the, the job video workshop. We are now going to talk about a lot of things in terms of culminating this whole presentation, this whole series. Um, we're going to talk about the long form resume. I have spent a lot of time talking about accomplishments. I have spent a lot of time talking about the short form resume. We're going to go to the long form resume, which really is we're going to spend very little time on it because it's just going to make a ton of sense really fast. I'm going to give you an overview, a LinkedIn review to about some of the important stuff. There is so much to know about LinkedIn, and there's so many good sources for it, uh, LinkedIn.com maybe, that I don't have to spend a lot of time on that, but I want to point some things out to you. I'm going to give you an overview on interviewing as well as valuable salary negotiating tips. Now, I'm going to hit both of these fairly fast because, quite frankly, there is a lot of good information out there, and I have a couple of sources I'm going to point out to you on uh, interviewing and salary. Um, but I'm still going to point out a couple things that I think are important. So let's go ahead and get going. In this section, you're going to learn how to create a rich and robust long-form resume. Real quick, let me say something. Um, I'm going to show you how to use the short form that I you know, propose you create and then expand it into a long form. However, I have no problem, and I tell people that I work with all the time, don't throw your current resume away. Make it better. If you're pleased with what you've got right now and it's working, maybe you can just take this before the beginning, middle, and end of each bullet point and make it a really rich and robust document. Um, and maybe not. So that's for you to, to consider. Um, I'm going to talk about LinkedIn for job search, a quick overview, about interviewing, an overview on types and styles. That's principally what I'm going to talk about. Some points for your consideration regarding salary negotiation. Women, I want you to negotiate salary. There's this glass ceiling for a reason, and principally a lot of the reason is women don't ask, don't negotiate. I don't, this may be opinion, it may be statistical, but I'm going to tell you in my experience, when I work with female clients and they go out and ask for the punch, they get it. I recently worked with a woman who got, she was an attorney, this is up in Dallas, she got a senior vice president position with a startup and she was afraid, she was scared to death because they, they offered her right at her range where she wanted to be, at the lower end of the range she wanted to be at. And she came to me and she says, Rick, they offered me right there so I can take it. And I said, I'm not going to tell you her name, it's a really unique name, but I said, let's go punch it up, let's go punch it up. And she did and she called me on the way back from the car and she was so jazzed because they there's a certain part of respect that comes from you negotiating too. So I know there's a place there between, I can't say the words on video that I want to say, but I don't want you to be perceived as a bitch, but I want you to be persuasive as heck. That's not how I wanted to say it. Um, seriously though, women, you, there's, there's a reason for the glass ceiling. Let's bust through it. I was raised by a single mom. I'm really big on this thing. For more information, I recommend salary.com. Duh. I, by the way, and for full disclosure, I write a column for salary.com, but they really have very good information. Quintcareers.com. That stands for quintessential. Quint, Q-U-I-N-T. Careers.com. And of course, LinkedIn.com. Quint Careers has more information on it for job search than any site you've ever seen. Dr. Randall Hansen and his wife, Catherine, are amazing with the stuff they offer. Amazing. Um, salary.com is it's a Nash, it's a global website. It's really prominent, and yes, you can look at your market share and see what you should be paid for your what you do. While I'm at it, I want to recommend LinkUp. Do not confuse that with LinkedIn. LinkUp, L-I-N-K-U-P.com. It is my favorite job board going currently, and it is because they only aggregate jobs from real companies, real corporate job boards. Last call, um, some 20,000 companies, they literally scrape their job boards every night. This is American Express, Johnson & Johnson, NASA, Exxon Mobil, everybody. They actually scrape real jobs, so there's no stale stuff on there. If it's stale, it's because the company didn't take it down yet. Every night at midnight, they dump their entire database and they rescrape 20,000 companies. It's an amazing product. It's an amazing company. I really like this job board. And guys, I think you already know, but I came from the job board business. That's how I learned this whole piece. The long form resume. So you get the, I received your resume, but I need more information phone call from the recruiter. This is what I prep all of my clients for. They have submitted their short form resume and they get that call. Hey Katrina, hi, this is Rick Gillis with a really useful job search company. Listen Katrina, I got your resume, but I need more information. And you're gonna say, great Rick, I sent you my short form. 
just to get your attention, let me have your email address. I'll send you my long form over right now. It is really, this whole process is predicated on you having a long form ready to submit. If you're not ready to submit when you get that phone call, you will miss the opportunity. So this long form, after all the talk we've had about accomplishments and short form resume, you got to be ready, ready with this one. And I'm also going to show you how this, how this works and where you want to use the short, where you go, go with the long form. But my clients get that call quite often. Hey, I got your resume, but I need more information. Great. Let me tell you the little silver lining in this thing. Recruiters don't want you to have their information. They do not want you to have their information. They do not want you to be able to email or call them. And I agree with them because everybody, all of us would be doing it. So when you say, let me have your email address and I'll send it right over, you got contact information. Now I'm not gonna tell you, do not abuse that. But I will also tell you every three or four days, you say, hey, it's Rick again, just wondering the status on that position. Reference number, that's it. That's the email you send. You don't send the four paragraph email that says I'm perfect for this position because, and because, because that will kill you in the eyes of a recruiter. You're wasting their time. The long form resume, I apologize, is only available at rickgillis.com resume format. It is not available in the book because honestly, I didn't think it was important enough. And I've had a lot of people asking me, why didn't you put a sample in the book? Well, I didn't. So go to rickgillis.com resume format and you will be able to look at, and there's a download there of the long form resume. So here's your sample. This is where you take your sample short form resume and expand it into your long form or traditional resume. I'm using short form and long form here. Out on the street, you're gonna wanna just call it your resume. When we're talking, we can call it, you know, long form and short form. On the street, it's just your resume. Page one, you really can't see that so well, and like I said, I apologize that, um, that it's not in the book, but basically what I have done is, the top half is exactly the same as the short form that you've already built. It's at the employment history where we start taking it out and we start enhancing and adding detail like you have already done on your traditional resume that you currently use. That's all this is. You're just gonna expand it. And then you're gonna do it on the next page and then at the last page and at the very last piece you're gonna put education, honors, awards, and stuff like that. That's all it is. Now listen, this resume, length is not critical within reason. I once had a guy, I'm not making this up, I once had a guy send me his resume, it was 30 pages long. And I just wrote him back and I said, I'm not even going to waste my time. Shorten it, send it back. So he did. He shortened it and he sent it back. And I told him I was not going to review six pages either. Because recruiter is not going to review six pages. I told this guy he needed his own blog. With that much information, heck with a resume. And I don't know what, I actually don't know what happened to him because this was just crazy, just crazy. So that's why I say within reason. Two pages is good, three pages is okay. You better have something to say to fill three pages. If you start going towards four, you better really, I mean, you better have some rock'em, sock'em, you really did some stuff. It's not necessary to modify the top half if you're using the short form document. It's not necessary to modify any of it, only at the employment history piece where you're gonna add it. You're gonna augment and enhance your employment history. Strive to make each bullet point end with resulting in. Especially if you take your current resume and you're of the mindset that it's good enough to use, which I have no doubt that you could do that. But make sure every bullet point says, I created a filing system that resulted in savings to the company of. If you don't have that resulting in, you're just providing a list. And I'll tell you what, recruiters don't like lists. I don't like lists. It's okay to expand, it, expand education, honors, and awards within reason. Once again, don't give me the overkill. Don't make me wonder if this is a professional student that's been, do, been doing nothing else for 40 years and has all this great theory but has no practical you know, application or and or all that community involvement stuff. You can really hurt yourself. So you know, keep it in mind. Guys, I told you this earlier on. I've said it several times, but keep your audience in mind. This is not for you. I see so many resumes that are an ode to moi. Wow, I really look good. Look at how good I look. It's not what a resume is about. This is not a bio you're sending to the movies, for whatever reason. Remove keywords. The long form is not intended for machine review. So do not leave any keywords. They are in the body of the document over that two or three pages, okay? 
But this is important too because you're not going to be submitting this document until somebody asks for it. So it's you're going to it's going to go to a real human person, and that's the whole pro that's what we're, we've been shooting for this whole time. When to short form and when to long form. Use the long form for invitations and introductions. When you know a real human person is going to look at your document, go with the long form. If you are, let's see, if, the, if you know for certain your resume will be received by a real human person, lead with the long form. Don't even go in with the short form. You don't need to. If you know a real human person, now when I say invitation or introduction, invitation, um, Bill asked me to introduce him to Perry, so I introduce him, and so Bill is now going to send his resume directly to Perry. He does not need to go. It's going to a real person. It's not going to a machine. Go with the long form. If you meet somebody at a networking event and they say, hey, send me my resume, I can send it over to the VP on your behalf. Go with the long form. So by invitation, by introduction, um, a staffing company calls you and says, hey, um, I saw your profile on LinkedIn. Uh, could, could you, would you mind sending over your resume? Real, long form, that's an introduction, that's an invitation. So by invitation or introduction, you go with the long form. If it's a real human person, that's the, that's the bottom line. The rule of thumb, the short form is designed to create a dialogue. It's meant to break the ice. It's meant to create that phone call, hey, I need more information, to introduce yourself. That's it. That's really all I have on, on long form resume. It's that simple. And that's why I didn't put a sample in the book. I didn't think I really needed to, but it's on the website. Okay, let's talk about LinkedIn. Although there are still legal and administrative hurdles, more and more firms are learning that accepting a social media profile alone, usually a LinkedIn profile, is more than adequate, at least initially, to begin the hiring process. That's at ere.net. And I agree with that. I agree with that so much that um, prior, I went and I asked a couple of questions of my online forums that I'm very active in. I recently asked two online forums if they would accept a LinkedIn link in lieu of a resume. Now this is very unscientific, not pretending to be scientific, and I will tell you, I have no mind problem telling you, I got 28 responses back when I put this out there, and I don't know if you know this, but I think I under, I'm under the impression that statistically, at 23 responses, you have got a significant, it's statistically significant, thank you. Um, so I had 28 responses, and I, it's interesting, 50% said they would or already do. And interestingly, those who already do, the applicant tracking system already, in great, uh, it, they work together. So the other 50% said not currently doing so, but they anticipate that changing in the future. I only had one person that said, no, we won't. And that reminds me of when I was starting the job board business and one company told me, no, we'll never do that. Yeah, right. <laughs> LinkedIn is mandatory in job search. Now listen, I have talked to some people who are teaching LinkedIn and they believe that without LinkedIn you can't possibly find another job and I'm gonna tell you right now, that's bogus. 60 to 80% of all jobs are found as a result of networking. You people might meet somebody here today who can introduce you to somebody and that's it, it's game over. 60 to 80% of all jobs are found as a result of networking. However, this is mandatory. Because I'll tell you what, what's going to happen is that 100% of recruiters are using LinkedIn. They are using LinkedIn. And it's a tool. They're either looking to find you or they're looking at your profile once they've received your documents, your resume. So you've got to be out there and it's got to be a really robust. Now I will tell you, using the short form model works really well on LinkedIn. LinkedIn you need to always continuously be playing with it, updating it, keeping it current. It's really important. Talk more about that in a little bit. Review all features available to job seekers on LinkedIn. Review all the features. I mean, there's up in the nav bar, there's a thing that says job. Click on it. Open it up. There's all kinds of tools. Some of them are going to cost you money and some are free. Use all the free ones you can first. Um, the job, basically, I remember when... Um, Auto Trader and Cars.com and those, they still operate on the same model. If you want to advertise your car for sale, you can put it on there for free. And it'll end up at the very, very, very bottom of the pile. If you want to pay the premium, you can get a headline. If you want to pay higher, you can get the photo. If you want to pay higher, you can be in the top 10. So you pay premium. Well, it's kind of the same thing on LinkedIn. The more, if you pay for the services, you will come in first on these resumes. I don't have a problem with that, once again. I know, understand though, when people are not working, that that can be a lot of money. So I'm not stupid to that either. Um, it's your choice, but um, 
it's important that you guys be using LinkedIn, and I'll be telling you a little bit more right now. Join groups, follow companies and influencers. Influencers are people who are top in their field. And I will tell you, one of my favorites is Lou Adler. He is an absolute job search master, L-O-U-A-D-L-E-R, Lou Adler. Um, he has just put out a new book, Hiring and Getting Hired, and it's really good. It's really good. And I'm not here to promote anybody doing what I do, but I lose that good. He really is. Um, it's an interesting book, too, because Lou actually teaches staffing companies how to recruit. And this book is written to recruiters how to recruit. And then at the end of each chapter, he flips it over and tells you, Job Seeker, here's how you use this information to your advantage. It's a great book. And he mentioned my book in his, and I really appreciate that. That was really cool. But anyway, um, he is one of the top 100 influencers on LinkedIn, Lou Adler is. Um, follow companies, the companies you're interested in, those companies you'd like to, because then when they just happen to get your resume and they scroll down the bottom and see who you look at, whoa, cool, he does look at Red Bull. He does look at Harley. That's what you'll see on mine. <laughs> um, Groups are groups of people who have like and similar interests. Some you require an invitation, some are open. Go join them. You might be networking with people who you wouldn't meet otherwise, but they're in the group. Now, I want to tell you something. When you're following groups, be a little <sighs> discriminant about what you choose. I find way too many unemployed people join other unemployed networking groups. And so when a recruiter looks at it and looks down and says, A, B, you know, job search group, job search networking group, job search networking group, group, it just screams, oh, I'm unemployed. So I see this a lot and I know that I don't think people recognize what they're looking like. And this is a national, this is a global forum. I mean, LinkedIn's all over the world. So be discriminate about which ones you use, but you know, make it look, and especially if you're looking for an oil and gas job, have lots of oil and gas companies down there. If you're looking for an IT job, lots of IT companies. Research companies and employees, even former employees. This is one of the coolest features on LinkedIn. Go up and one of the, one of the, one of the drop down boxes, you can choose companies. Type in a company name and go, and let's say you wanna look at CNN. And you go over to CNN, and so it shows you all the people that are, it'll show the people in your network that are LinkedIn or second or third from you to LinkedIn that are at CNN. And then, but it'll also have a little in the blue, it'll say review or see all employees. Click on it. It may be fascinating what you find in there. You can start seeing people. Let me tell you what, I have a friend of mine who went and started talking to former employees at one company he was applying to. And it was fascinating to me because I said, well, all you're going to hear is a bunch of people bad-mouthing. And he said, no, Rick. He said it was fully 70% were positive. He said one guy he talked to about, he said, what are you looking for? He says, well, I'm looking for, at the time, he's big into uh, accounting and, and uh, st statistics. He said, well, who are you? He called a guy. On the, he, I mean, he literally reached out through LinkedIn and said, can I talk with you? I have an interview coming up with. And, the, and a lot of these people came back and said, sure, you can give me a call at or we can email, whatever. One guy called him and, and he said, uh, who are you interviewing with? I'm interviewing with Bob. He said, oh, no, 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 you want to talk to Jim. He's the guy that has the authority. How cool, you know? So this does take some time. So what? If you're looking for a job, you got time. Um, so former employees groups, now that's really only the big, big companies that will have former employees groups, but they're out there and they're really neat. So look at all, there's a ton of tools on LinkedIn. They are really, at least at this point in time, they're the best, far and away. What may happen tomorrow? I already told you this. When it comes to social media, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. There's a lot of people that are chasing LinkedIn now because they are so, they're amazing. LinkedIn requires effort initially. If you have not set up a profile, it's going to require some effort on your part. Do it. And consistent attention. Not constant, but consistent. Personally, I play LinkedIn like most people play Facebook. I'm very aggressive on LinkedIn. I have lots and lots of connections, and I, I mean all over the world I've got connections. And I have no problem asking and advancing something I'm working on with my LinkedIn connections. I have no problem with that. Zero. That's why we all connected, and you should take advantage. Don't, get, don't just get a bunch of connections and say, I've got 500 plus connections. Doesn't mean anything. Work these connections. Does anybody out there in my group know somebody at? Well, I'm that guy. Whoa, cool, it happens. Recruiters are looking for photos, recommendations, and connections, and endorsements help too. When I say that, recruiters have told me they want, in order for your profile, LinkedIn has a model, and I haven't looked at this lately, but LinkedIn had a model where they said, in order to be 100% complete, you had to have a um, photograph, you had to have three recommendations, 
and uh, you needed, I think, oh, and the recruiters are looking for 200 plus connections or so. Um, and I think, and I've had some people push back on that, like, I don't even know 200 people. Well, you know, kind of work it. But um, <laughs> endorsements help too. Endorsements are people just click on your, you know, they say, yes, he has a skill and all that. I have a lot of endorsements on mine. I appreciate those. By the way, I'm an open networker on LinkedIn. So anybody want to join me, if you're not already with me, please do. Um, open networker meaning I accept all invitations. Um, some people are not. Some people are very specific. If I don't know you, no way I'm going to connect with you. That's it. And that's fine. That's theirs. Um, about your LinkedIn photo, EEOC has a stance on this, which I do not disagree with at all. However, the recruiters have a different stance. The EEOC believes that there's a huge potential for discrimination by having a photo on the site. Once again, age, sex, racial, whatever. I don't disagree with that. And the EEOC does have a stand that they would like this not to be the case, photos and stuff. I feel that way when it comes to um, video resumes too. I will, I've been asked over the years to get involved in video resume companies. I won't touch it. Not a chance. Not a chance. But that said, recruiters do want to see a photo. So I'm going to tell you right now, recruiters, you should have a good photo. Now, let's talk about that. So I mean, for the case of our, inst our, ser our particular um, purpose for being here right now, you should have a photo. However, that photo of you guys, four of you at a bar, holding a glass, and you cropped it right here with that beer at the edge of the glass, that's not cool. I recently was looking at a company, and just for the heck of it, I went and reviewed their, all the people on LinkedIn at this one company. Um, it's a very large local company, I mean, in several states, but they're based here in Houston. And they, um, I found 204 employees on LinkedIn for that company. And I would say fully 40% of their photographs, including their CEO, were inappropriate. The CEO is holding a glass of wine to the photographer. Mm -hmm. And I'm like going, and that comes all the way down. And so most of the photos were inappropriate for business. Most of them were bars where they're all sitting in and they did the crop thing. And I'm like, you know, and this company has a real image problem and they don't know it. And I saw this just by reviewing that one company looking through their LinkedIn profile. And I looked at all 204 of their employees who are on LinkedIn and I was embarrassed for the company. And I have nothing to do with this company, but I just was intrigued. So guys, even a selfie is fine. Make sure there's a good plain background, a professional headshot. If you got one, great. But make sure it's something that is business appropriate because this is business. This is not social media. And you guys with the big fish, that doesn't work. And you ladies in Hawaii with Waikiki behind you, that doesn't work. It's not where it's at. Professional. Just get a white backdrop, black backdrop, and do the photo. Guys, LinkedIn is continuously adding features. Pay attention. I mean, literally weekly, you can see new stuff come up, and they don't announce it. They just do it. They make changes. So you'll have to watch it. So um, some of that stuff, you know, they're not, and if, and if it doesn't work or they get a lot of blowback, they'll pull it out. But it's something you should know about. All the majors, Facebook, Google, Twitter, et cetera, are chasing job search, and new online pl uh, platforms, job search platforms, are appearing daily, literally. Facebook is really making some headway. Google, you know, with Google Plus is doing a lot of stuff. Twitter is quite an amazing tool when it comes to job search. Um, even if it's not for applying for, it's for going back and being reviewed and looked at. So all the majors are chasing LinkedIn. And let me tell you what, there's a ton of revenue in job search, and that's why everybody goes this way. LinkedIn did not start out as a job search format. It started out as a B2B format. You wanted to meet the vice president to sell widgets to him. Here's, I know somebody who can introduce you to. That's how LinkedIn started. It was a great model. And I, that's when I jumped in. I've been a member for a long time. But it's really moved to job search. Those other functions, you want to know somebody you can sell widgets to, it still works too. And then there's a LinkedIn app. There is the LinkedIn app. So I'm going to tell you that you, know, you should have it on your phone if you want to, if you're so inclined. The interview overview. Now, I'm going to be hitting this kind of hard because honestly, there are several books out there. There's a lot of stuff you can find online about interviewing, but I'm going to burst one particular bubble as we get into this. In this section, you're going to learn types of interviewing, how to apply the accomplishments worksheet. When someone asks, tell me a little bit about yourself or tell me about a time when, star and RRR or BME. That's from your accomplishments worksheet. The how and when of thank you notes and to ask for the job, and to smile. Really. Now, I'm not going to hit smiling again. But I'm going to tell you, I cannot tell you how many recruiters I have had that have told me, Rick, would you tell your candidates to just smile when they come in? Just, oh, God, really nice to meet you, Celeste. Guys, we're all people. It's OK. 
Pretend you're having coffee with them. Put some kind of mindset in place. Interviewing is confrontational. It's the nature of it. And I'll tell you what's interesting. When you go to a company to interview, you're going to interview across a square table. When you go to a staffing company, you're going to interview around a round table. It's the psychology. Staffing tech company wants says, we like you, we want you here, we're all friendly, woohoo, same team. Staffing, co I mean, corporate company is square table, conference room, and it's this. Speak to the hand. Now, I'm going to be polite, I'm going to be friendly, everybody you're going to meet is going to be great, and that's why, and you're going to see this repeated, but I'll go ahead and get to it right now, that's why everybody says, I nailed the interview. No, you didn't. You just think you did, because everybody was polite and friendly, and that's what they're supposed to be. They might be working with you next week. They're not going to be unfriendly, but that does not mean you nailed the interview. So do not ever leave an interview and say, wow, I nailed it. No, that's when you go find three more to take. Anyway, smile. I'm not joking. I've heard this three or four times from recruiters. Rick, you know, just tell them to smile. Yeah, what's wrong with it? Yeah, it's nice to meet you. Thanks for having me. Let me tell you what I can do for you. Woohoo! Interview mindset. You view your paycheck as payment for services rendered, don't you? And the fact is, your time is what you're selling. You're entitled to wages. You're entitled to be paid for the service rendered. However, employers view your paycheck as their investment in you. It's a different mindset altogether. And if you're not returning value on that investment, guess what they're going to do with you? Just like a stock, they're going to dump you. So it's always, that's got to be your mindset. I'm here, and I've been pounding this the whole series. I'm here to add value to your organization. You're going to be so pleased that we had this meeting today. Wait till you see where we go from here. This needs to be overriding mindset. Interviewing by its very nature is confrontational. But let me tell you what, the fact that you got to the interview, you're 75% of the way there. I mean, seriously, that's about the right number. You may not get it, but you did a lot of work and you did all the right things to get that far. And I think... Okay, everyone's looking for problem solvers. That's a quote. I have one more piece I'm going to have, but I know it's in a bullet point here. Everybody is looking for problem solvers. That's a quote from a recruiter, one of the global companies that I work with. He's a friend of mine. And he told me that. He said, everybody is looking for problem solvers. What have I been saying all this time? Yes, go in and express your value. I'm here to solve your problem. Remember, preparation equals accomplishments. Now, the accomplishments worksheet, you've done that, and I'm going to show you in a minute how to do deep research to prep for an interview. But you've done all this work, this is where it's going to pay off. This is what you've been doing all this for, so you can get the paycheck, so you can get recognized, so you can get the position, you can get the offer. That's what this is all about. So, maintain a list of companies and positions you've applied for. I'm always astonished at people that don't do this, just send stuff out and hope. No, there's got to be a routine to this. You've got to have a, a method to your madness. Keep a list of the companies and the positions you've applied for. Minimum, the company name, the position title, the date you applied, and notes and updates. Next time you call up and, and Marge says, hey, Rick, we'd like to talk to you a little bit more about that position. Great, Marge. How's your son doing since he broke his leg? Oh, wow, I can't remember you, you remember that. That's so cool. Well, I wrote it down right here. I don't remember anything. <laughs> Come on, seriously. <laughs> it's not hard to make some notes and say, wow, she couldn't see me today because she had to run out to the hospital. Her kid broke his leg and he's resetting. And so how's your son doing? Take every interview even if you don't want the job. Guys, if you get an offer to interview and you hate the company, take the interview. I cannot tell you how many people I have told this to. I have one client I worked with that literally took four interviews around the nation. I mean, traveled, South Carolina, Atlanta, Chicago, I don't remember where the other one was. One of them absolutely positively she knew she was not going to take. And I said, you take it anyway. You take it anyway, because I'll tell you what, interviewing is tough. Get all the practice you can. To go into your first interview and it to be that company you so badly want to work for, you're going to bomb it. Because you need to be smiling. You need to be prepped. You know, the more practice, the better. And you get to a point where you're really, really comfortable with it. And I mean, I hope you're comfortable anyway. But, you know, I think I've already told some of the people in this room that I'm not exactly shy. I'll talk to that wall until it talks back to me. I'll wait. You guys may not be that person. But when I go into an interview, I'm still going to be nervous too. I have certain expectations. And, and, uh, and by the way, before I forget it, because I don't think I have anything on here on this, interviews are timed. You may not think so, but more than likely, when you sit down, there's a clock probably over your head that you can't see that they're watching. 
And, they'll, and the, the time allotted per interview has a lot to do with the position being sought. If you're an admin assistant, they're going to give you 15, 20 minutes. If you're a mid-management, they may give you an hour, you know, an hour 15. If you're senior level, you'll probably have half a day or something like that. But they're looking at that clock. Part of this accomplishments worksheet when you present it is to get them to extend that clock. Wow, cool. Your kids go to that school too? Well, mine do too. Boom, all of a sudden we're off on a personal tangent. That accomplishments worksheet will serve so much value when you present it at the interviews. Guys, you have to walk in with questions for your interviewers. This is not negotiable. Every, inter every recruiter I've ever talked to tells me how upset they are when somebody comes in with a blank portfolio and nothing. And don't think you got it in your head, you don't. They wanna see stuff written, open your portfolio, have those questions written out. And I'm telling you at minimum eight to 10. I mean, they, you come in and you're not prepared for this interview, it's disrespect on their part, that's how they see it, and they wanna see hard questions. And you should have them anyway. Um, value of questions cannot be overstated. I think I'm making my point. Ask about the company and the industry. Ask about the job specifically. Ask about the person who formerly held this position. More importantly and easiest, Google interview questions by industry. Interview questions chemical engineering. Interview questions information technology, Microsoft, whatever. There's all kinds of stuff online that will help you in interview questions. You don't have to make this all up, but you should at a certain point go through the job posting and address those issues that are in the job posting. How, why, what, where, when, how. You should be able to do that. This is not hard. And it's like I said, it shows courtesy and respect that you're going in and asking. And I'm gonna tell you another thing too. A lot of people don't do it. They may take up the time, but they're not gonna get the offer. When you go in and show that you've done your due diligence and you really care, it will, it will show. My favorite interview question is this. And I've, I've, I mean, I'm a sales guy. I've always been a sales guy in my life. Um, and this is what's called the assumptive close. I'm assuming you're gonna hire me. Honor now, honor now, when you and I sit down to discuss my performance a year from now, what will success look like? You see what I did? I assume we're gonna sit down a year from now to discuss my performance. That's my assumptive close. Cause she might go, well, Rick, I don't know if we're that far yet. Oh, uh, darn, I'm not doing so good. You know what, Rick, I'd really like you to have done this and this and this, and if you could have this done, I'm feeling good about this. Woohoo! high five, yeah, baby, you know? So a year from now when you and I sit down to discuss my performance, what will success look like? It's, it's an assumptive close. Do not ask about salary, guys. Let them bring it up. Salary is a huge, and I'm gonna talk about this in a little bit further because we're gonna talk about salary negotiation. This is not the time to bring it up. Do not bring up salary, especially at that first phone call. Now, if they tell you the range, and they will, it's gonna come up quick because it's a very important consideration, but let them bring it up. You start asking about salary, vacation days, holidays, et cetera, you're a rookie, you don't have time, I'm not interested in you. Because remember I told you, I'm seeking a rewarding and challenging career. By damn, I don't care what you want. You're gonna do what I need done or I don't need to hire you. It's that simple. You, I hire you, you start doing what you're doing, you become part of the team, Woohoo! it's gonna get better and better all the time. But don't start asking, out by sal uh, start asking about salary. Professional appearance includes your online image. We've already talked about that. Guys, if you're not sure about how to dress, you can't miss in a suit. You cannot miss in a suit. If you have an opportunity and if it's local, I would suggest you try to drive by the office a couple of days beforehand and just kind of stalking. <laughs> not suggesting that, not recommending it. See what they're, how the people are dressed that are there and then dress a little bit nicer. But you can, you can never miss with a good suit, ladies and men. And you can't, and if you're overdressed, so be it. Wow, must be a newbie, must be interviewing, yeah. I got the interview, Jack. Um, the interview begins in the parking lot. You know that person you just cut off for that great space deck to the elevator? You're gonna interview with that person in 20 minutes. <laughs> true story, this is a sales story, but it's a true story. I was in the men's room one time at this one place, I had a sales call, and I'm washing my hands. This guy comes up next to me, and uh, he's washing his hands, and I said, how are you doing? This is what ladies, this is what guys do. How are you doing? I'm fine, how are you? Okay, get done, leave, go out. 20 minutes later, I'm sitting there in the lobby waiting for this, my appointment. It's the guy I just washed hands next to that comes out and I said, hey, at least you know I got clean hands. 
True story, you know, but this is what happens. I had another situation, too, where I had a lady that I was waiting for her appointment, and uh, I was really, I was kind of just, I was goofing with the receptionist. She wasn't too busy, so we were just talking back and forth. I'm sitting here, she's right there. We're talking for about 15 minutes, and then uh, she says, don't worry, uh, uh, the receptionist will be right back. I'm just spotting for her right now. Okay, cool, so boom, boom, boom. Lady comes over, takes they play, trade places, and she says, come on, I'll see you now. I was sitting there talking to the director of HR. She was spotting the receptionist. You don't ever know who you're talking to. Besides, shouldn't we just be polite and friendly anyway? The receptionist is a power player, guys. I cannot tell you how many jobs, and I know this for a fact. I've heard of stories where, so Jackie, uh, what did you think of uh, Bill that was just here? I just interviewed with him. You know what? He was a real jackass in here. Oh, that's too bad. I was going to make him an offer. I already told you this, you did not nail the interview. I don't care if you did or not. I hope you did, and I really want you to, but do not leave with that intention. I mean, if you nailed the interview, they either made an offer, or they're gonna get back to you tomorrow, or something like that, but until then, you're not done. You're gonna continue looking for an employment opportunity. Be prepared to communicate your core values. This is soft skills. When I say soft skills, I'm talking about leadership, motivation, the ability to take charge, works well with others. You can play in the sandbox and not kick sand in people's faces. All this stuff is important. It's really important and it's not inappropriate to bring this stuff up in an interview, particularly entry level job seekers. It's not inappropriate. What I'm saying, I'm talking about right out of high school, right out of college. You may have, that may be your best, um, and that's also transferable skills. Up to the, up to the task, take charge, you know, that's, um, Soft skills have a lot, to, and if you're not sure about soft skills, go Google it, because there's a lot of good information. Wikipedia has some good responses on that, but soft skills are important, and we all have them, and really, quite frankly, it can be one, two that'll, uh, it can be a piece that will also cover up for gaps in your employment. You can talk about, get to the point of talking about what you're gonna bring to the organization. Obtain every interviewer's business card, because you won't, or obtain the correct spelling of their name. I'm going to tell you right now, every recruiter, this goes back to what I said a while ago, they don't want you to have their contact information. Every recruiter you sit down with, and guys, if any of you ever happen to sit down with somebody and they say, could I have your business card? And they give it to you, call me, because that'll be a first. I want to know about it. Oh, no, I left them in the office. Or, no, I don't have any. I don't carry any with me. They do not want you. And I don't have a problem with that, honestly. If every person they interviewed and then they had to say no to, all of a sudden this person's got my phone number. My, no, uh-uh. But absolutely positively and write it down on the pad right in front of you. Ask for how they spell their name and get it spelled properly. Steel might be S-T-E-E-L-E -E -E, or it might be S-T-E-E-L. Get it spelled correctly. You misspell this, the next piece isn't going to work. I'm going to tell you what I do. This is one of my requirements. I require my candidates, I don't care if they're applying for a job on an oil rig, to, pr to produce a thank you card. Now, this is a highly effective technique, and it's interesting because I've gotten quoted in media all over the country because of this. It's like, wow, I never thought about that. Let me tell you what, guys. You went to the interview, and you did a really good job. You're going to send a thank you card, right? Yes, but wrong. You're going to carry. You're going to go out to Walmart or, or Office Depot or Target, and you're going to buy a box of 24, 25 thank you cards and envelopes. These are plain four by five plain white or ivory panel cards and envelopes. You're gonna carry that box with you or you're gonna keep them in the car or if you're on a train or subway, you're gonna keep them in a portfolio, a, a messenger bag. But you're gonna take them with you to the interview. At the end of the interview, when you're done and you've gotten everybody you have met with their correct name and spelling, you're gonna sit down in the lounge, in the lobby or back in your car and you're gonna write a thank you note on the spot. And then you're going to go back in, and I don't care if this is one or ten. You're going to handwrite the name on the envelope. You're going to handwrite a thank you note that's going to say very little. By the way, it's in the, in the blue book. You have a copy of it, The Real Secret to Finding a Job. There's a chapter in there on thank you, letter, on thank you cards. You're going to say basically this, thank you very much for your time and interest. I'm the right person for this job. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Throw a couple of your business cards in there, your job search business cards. Put it in the envelope. Take it back to the receptionist and say, hey, I just met with Mr. Jones. Would you please see that he gets this right away? Weren't you just here? Yeah, I just interviewed with him. Thank you, I appreciate that. I'm out of here. 
Well, when receptionist, you're not receptionist, Celeste, but when receptionist walks in and next candidate is coming in to sit down and she goes and says, hey, that guy that just left, left this for you. You're Mr. Jones now. Sorry, Kara. <laughs> Whoa. You open it up and you look at it and you go, this guy just left and here's a thank you card. Guess what? You just destroyed the next interview. Next person doesn't have a chance. Here's the deal, guys. This is why I've been doing this for a long time. Everybody sends an email. Not elegant. Thank you for your time. I'm the right person. Then you go on for three paragraphs. <laughs> you email is not elegant. Snail mail is too slow. A lot of these interviews, the choice gets made the day of the interview. You're done. So you miss the opportunity. So when it arrives two or three days later, oh, it's too bad. I really like this guy, but he didn't get the job in the trash. But you're the person that left that thank you card on the spot and blew them away. And let me tell you what they're thinking. This is the way this person is going to treat my clients. This is the person I want. So make an impact. This is cheap. Let me tell you what, that box of cards, $24.25 at Target, Walmart, whatever, it's only 10, 11 bucks. This is cheap. And take a whole bunch with you. If you're going to meet with six people, take 15 because you're going to ruin six of them. I do it every time. Regardless of the type of interview, answer the question and shut up. <laughs> Remain on point. Do not go down any rabbit holes. When you're in an interview, pretend you're on a, in a court of law and you're on the witness stand. Answer the question and shut up. Be polite. 20 seconds, 15 seconds, a minute, whatever you need, but then shut up. Don't keep going. If the interviewer wants more information, they'll ask you. If you were perfectly fine answering what you said, we'll move on to the next piece. Let me tell you what, guys. I don't think I have this. Yeah, I do have it in here somewhere, but I'll, let me get to it right now. In my opinion, a successful interview is when they talk 60% of the time and you talk 40 because they're selling you on the job. Whereas if you're talking 60 and they're talking 40, you're over, you've oversold yourself. You're not going to get considered. You're getting desperate. I want to talk real quickly about analyticals and interviewing. I, this analyticals are what I call engineers, IT professionals, accounting types. These are the people that believe because they have the skills, the experience, the credentials, they should get the job. Just get it. And it makes sense. We'd all like that. But the fact is they have to realize, analyticals have to realize, and I know I have some in the room, have to realize that there's probably at least 200 other people with equal similar skills. So you still have to sell yourself. That, that said, Analyticals generally do not do well in the first interviews. They generally do not because they're kind of going, you know, it's kind of, it's just not what they're about. They're not the A-type personality. Until the interviewer starts talking about their processes and what they do and when they start peeling back the onion, I, analyticals do fabulously well. They love talking about the processes and the, and the manner in which they did what they did. My, my analyticals, the people I work with, I prep them with this accomplishments worksheet to go right to it. Um, I, saw, I told some of you, you folks during the break about a scientist I worked with who had all these patents, international and global, but he, excuse me, international and, and national, but he couldn't talk, he couldn't save himself going into an interview. And I asked him, I said, did any one of those patents ever make any money? And he said, yeah. He said, one of them, the day it was issued, uh, generated $480 million in interview, I said, uh, in, in revenue. I said, that's what you lead with. Guess what? Now he starts getting phone calls. Before then, he was just proud about the fact that he had 40 national U.S. patents and 12 international patents. Well, that's pretty prolific, no question. But that's not enough to say. You know, there's a lot of patents issued that don't make any money, ever. So deep research is required. It's going to show. LinkedIn and Google current and former employees. Before you get there. Hoovers.com or similar business databases, let me tell you what, libraries across the nation have databases that are free. Hoovers.com, for instance, is a pay site, and it's really an amazing site, but it's very expensive. So um, for, for one person to use just for this purpose, but uh, I, have a, I personally have a library card, and I go to the reference databases all the time. Great information. Go to the corporate website, every page including job postings. Yes, look at job postings. You can get an idea of the arc of where the company's doing. Where are they hiring a lot of? There's growth there. Look at the SEC 10K and 10Q. SEC is a Securities Exchange Commission. If they are shareholder owned, they're required to put this information out. It is the same information effectively as the annual report, except it's not glossed over. 
it will have all the warts and scars and everything else that's in there. So SEC 10K, which is annual, and 10Q, which is a quarterly report. Those are great. They'll be on the website if they're shareholder owned. Press releases. Look at press releases for the last year. You'll see a lot about what the company's about. Now listen, you've gotten all this information. It doesn't mean you're an expert. You don't know what they talked about in the staff meeting this morning. So don't go in there saying, wow, I saw on your SEC 10K. Oh, wow, we resolved that three years ago. What, what are you looking at? You know, don't pretend that. You just want to prepare yourself with the mindset of being prepared. Guys, I want to add, to, this is really important. I want you to go in and ask for the job. I really want you to ask for the job. Now, I'm going to tell you what, when you get in there, the thing, the mistake that most people make is they say, at the end of the interview, they say, uh, what's the next step? What should I, what, are you going to call me or should I? Wrong. You do not end an interview on a question. You end an interview on a statement. Katrina? When do I start? Contra Katrina, I really <laughs> want this job. No, I really want okay, this job. I really do. That's what I, I want you, that's all I want you to say. I want you to look him square in the eye. I want you to hold that hand, that extra half second, uncomfortable, creepy, look him in the eye and say, I want this job. That's all. Okay. It works. Don't forget to ask for the job, guys. I am not telling, joking. This is so important. Ask for the job. Did I happen to mention I want you to ask for the job? Do it. That is the most important part. At the end of this whole thing, you've gotten this far, and then you leave by saying, what's the next step? Wrong question. Ask for the job. I mean, seriously, this is so easy, and this is why you went there. Don't be intimidated by it. Types of interviews, telephone or the pre-interview, traditional interview, behavioral interview, lunch interview, panel interview, extended day-long interview. But first, a quick note about staffing companies and interviewing. Guys, if you're working with a staffing company, they are trained in this stuff. They're good at it. Pay attention. If you're working with a staffing company and they start teaching you how to interview and they start prepping you, pay big attention. They spend an enormous amount of time training for this stuff and they do it because they're in the business of selling people to get a really good paycheck they're going to interview really, really well. So pay attention if you're working with staffing companies. The telephone or pre-interview, this is your first impression. And you know the saying, you only get one chance to make a first impression. So don't answer and go, yeah. <laughs> Have your accomplishments worksheet handy type of mind. Because the first line from a recruiter is going to be, um, tell me a little bit about yourself. And everybody, the standard answer recruiters get is, what would you like to know? Really, you sent your resume to me and you're applying for this position and you're saying, so instead when somebody says, tell me a little bit about yourself, well, you know what, Jim, I'd like you to know that I was responsible for 49% of one sales, one organization I worked with, generated about a million dollars in revenue. Is that something you'd like to know more about? Wow. You just went to the top of the hit parade, guys. That's how you do that. Anticipate screening questions. And listen, a lot of people think screening questions are against the law, against the rules. Bull. They're totally. The law says they have to treat every candidate exactly the same. The laws are asking the same questions, and it's not illegal to be asked your age. A lot of people think that's uh, wrong, too. It's not, as long as they do it with everybody else. Whether they're doing it or not, I can't tell you. But anticipate screening questions. Uh, can you pick up 35 pounds? If the job requires it, that's not against the law. Stand and smile. Even if you're on, the telephone view, uh, on a telephone interview, the energy follows. That's, that's, a, that's a standing radio thing. And radio, stand up. The energy's there. Salary may or may not come up. You should have a range in mind. You should know what your range is. Never tell anybody, I need $100,000. I need $60,000. Have a range. I need between 55 and 60. If it comes up. Traditional interview is simple. It's usually hiring department managers generally have no interviewing training. That's a fact. So to a degree, you can control this interview if you know the STAR technique. And I use STAR because a lot of people know that. Actually, you guys already know the STAR technique. It's called beginning, middle, and end of accomplishments, the net result. But STAR is S-T-A-R. That's STAR is the S-T is situation and or task you needed to accomplish the situation. A is the action you took, keeping the focus on you. R is the results you achieved. Now I'm seeing more and more interviews now coming out where they're following up with three other R's. The risk you did what you did, the reason in doing that you did, and the relevance of what you accomplished. And I'm seeing this from national organizations. Traditional interview type questions. What do you see yourself doing five years from now? What's your greatest strength? What's your greatest weakness? Let me tell you what, let me give you a really good answer to greatest weakness. Because um, that's a really hard question to answer, and personally, I won't accept that question. But what you can say is, I think that's a better, 
I think the better answer would be, you could address my weaknesses as we move along and I'll get better for you. I don't want you to go say, well, you know, I don't really like to come to work and stuff. That doesn't help. So you might want to think about that. And once again, you can Google these and find some great responses. They're expecting the canned response, so personalize it. What qualifies you for this position? What's the most recent book you've read? Really? Yeah. What can you tell me about my company? If you were a tree, what kind of tree would you be? I'm not joking. This is, yeah, this is, this, I'm not making this stuff up. In traditional interview type questions, you can see this kind of thing. The behavioral interview is a bigger deal and a big difference. Tell me about a time when. When you hear that, you better be prepared. These are people who know how to interview because these are tough questions. If, you were, if I was to ask a previous boss about how you did, these are hard questions to answer. And you, their accomplishments worksheet, all that work you have done, is a perfect place in order to have the response. You know, what that accomplishment worksheet was about, when somebody asks you a question without ever breaking eye contact, I just start telling you the answer because I've worked this accomplishment worksheet. I wrote out that paragraph of the details. I'm ready to answer. Tell me about a time when, yeah, you know, I'd like you to know about the time that I was responsible. Go straight to it. It's based on the idea that the best way to predict future performance is to examine past situations. It's seeking to see, it's also seeking very much to see how you think on your feet. They're going to try to paint you into a corner. Your accomplishments worksheet is a heavy lifting. This is where it's going to pay off. You've already done all the work for this. You're really ready. It can be difficult, which it is meant to be if you're not prepared. Once again, if you've done the accomplishments worksheet, you're prepared. So that, let me go ahead and go on to the lunch interview. And I appreciate what you're saying, Kara, so this is going to be interesting. This is an observational interview, guys. They're observing you. Use your napkin. I actually talked with somebody not too long ago who told me that master's candidate they flew in from out of town who they took to lunch, the napkin never came off the table, and he did not get the offer. It's just that simple. Really, yes, but that's how that person would be in with their client. So that's really important. Um, do not plan on eating. Okay. Yeah. Kara had said, well, you know, do not order the most expensive thing on the plate. I agree, I mean, on the menu. I agree with that, except just order a chicken salad because you're not going to eat. They're going to keep you talking. They want to see if you're going to talk with your mouth full. And that's why I have Power Bar. Before you go out to lunch, go into the men's room or the ladies' room and swallow a Power Bar. Just chunk that thing down because that's all you're going to get for lunch that day. That's it. I'm serious. You're not going to eat. And this is deliberate. This is by design. Plan on talking a lot. Does anyone want to see if you're going to talk with your mouth full? Like you might in front of a client, which is a very bad thing to do. Be polite to wait staff. I mean, I shouldn't have to tell you that. You know, be on your best manners, but I'm telling you anyway. They're noticing all that stuff. Panel interview. This is becoming more and more common, more and more prevalent, panel interviews. You're in the spotlight or the hot seat. You may have to deal with multiple questions simultaneously. That's by design. That's deliberate. They want to see how you handle it. It's okay if you say, hey, Bill, hold on a second. I'll get to your question. You were saying, okay, I, okay, great. Let me answer your question next, or let me finish up what you were Keep control. They're trying to put you on a hot seat. Keep control of the situation. It's not that hard. You can say, that's a great question. I'll be right back with you. Hold that thought. I'll be right there. It's okay. They want to see if you're in control of the situation. The reasons for interview panels are, be are becoming more and more prolific, but bad hires destroy careers, guys. It happens. Somebody makes a bad hire, that can reflect on you if that person works for you. This minimizes making bad hires. Work team oriented. You may, be work, you may be interviewing with an entire team of people that all work together, a department, a manufacturing plant, whatever. They want to make sure that you're going to be, that everybody's going to be able to get along with you. The ability for the company to see several candidates at once. Now, a panel interview can be that. If they're going to take, I have a friend of mine who recently, no, recently, well, a year or so ago, took a panel interview and had six to eight people at that interview. One was from Atlanta, one was from New York City, one was from Chicago. And the interview, I think, was in South Carolina. If they're going to clear all these people's schedule and bring all these people in who were not productive that day, they're really going to nail it, and they're going to make a decision at the end of that day. So panel interviews are its an ability for a company to see several candidates at the same time. Often the, the hiring decision is made very quickly, 
And this is why you cannot forget your thank you cards. You make sure everybody on that table, everybody in that panel, and if, even if you go from room to room, office to office, conference room, you make sure everybody gets a thank you card. The day-long interview, pace yourself. It's going to be a long day, and it's going to be on a very strict and hard schedule. At 8 to 8.15, you're going to be here. At 8.15 to 8.25 or 8.35 or 8.45 till 9 o'clock, you're going to be here. And you're going to meet with a VP and then a senior vice president and then maybe the HR professionals. It's going to be a very long day, and it's also just to see how well you hold up. Interestingly, you're probably going to meet your competition if it's a day-long interview because they brought people in from all over the place and they're going to structure. So when you're in with somebody at 8.15 to 9 o'clock, the other person's from 8.15 to 9 o'clock seeing somebody else. And they're comparing you guys right there on the spot. It's probably going to be timed and highly structured. It's okay to repeat yourself. You're only you. You're going to be last similar, same and similar questions to a degree. Remember, it's your audience is new each time, but they're going to be comparing notes. So you want to, you know, have a, have, be able to add, embellish something or minimize something that you said somewhere else. Lunch is going to be included, so see lunch interview. Use your napkin. The future of interviewing. Video interviewing services. These are becoming very, very common. And I'm going to show you on the following slide something I got just this week in my email for a company, a very major company, which I took their name out, offering video interviewing services. Skype, why not? This is great stuff. Now this is past. I don't know this. I don't consider any of this discriminatory at all. They've already gotten past the interview piece. They've already, I mean, the resume piece and all that's gone. So we're moving into a place where it's you're really gonna. Hopefully, it's a touch point. It's just that it's electronic. YouTube. Now this one is kind of weird, in the sense that I worked with a guy and I couldn't believe it. And this is so interesting because he was applying for a position in library sciences with a county library, and they sent him a list of five prepared questions and they asked him to go on YouTube and prepare and, and answer. Read the question and then provide his answer and then put it up on YouTube and then send them the link. I didn't like that. YouTube could go anywhere and, and he didn't get the job either. So I was like, ah, it really stinks. And I said, send me the link. I want to see this. He sent me the link. And I thought that was kind of advanced for a county library to do it. It was a small town. It was a really small town. But I was like, oh, I don't like that idea of putting it out there on the internet, me personally. Pre-recorded telephone pre-interviews. Oh my God, I hate these. Yes, you get, you dial in and then you hit one and there's your first question and you answer it and then you hit, you know, whatever, start, stop, two, three, and it goes to the next question and yeah, I hate those. No people action, no interaction. I hate those, but they are in existence. Mobile devices, interviewing apps. This is in the following slide as well. Um, native video interviewing. I like this. I love this term. And internet people are always coming up with great terms. Native means it will reside on your mobile phone. That's all native means. But anyway, this company, and I just I copied and pasted this. Here's how it works. This is from their email I got. You determine which candidates you're interested in and then send them video interview requests directly from their candidate records. That's called an applicant tracking system from the ATS. No more sinking time into scheduling and phone screening. That's my highlight. Wow, you're not going to have to talk to real people. That's what it says. And Brand X video interviews feature questions from your hiring team that candidates simply record answers to using a webcam. They're going to use their phone and do FaceTime. I thought this is a little weird because, and I understand once again it's a tool, but uh, at a certain point, I don't know. So you request the interview, they record responses on their own time and from their own locations, especially if they're sitting in a bar, which is a great place to do it, and send them back. If you know someone isn't a good match, simply fast forward to the next candidate's interview. Wow, we didn't have to even deal with real people. You're just a piece of video now. I don't like that. Can you tell? But it is what it is, and I'll tell you what, I'm not, not against technology by any stretch, but I always, always, always prefer at some point when we get to this place, let me shake hands, let me meet with somebody, at least telephone me, you know, something, whatever. Salary negotiation. In this section, you're going to learn real world versus pie in the sky tactics, how to determine your Monday morning rate, how to get more of what you want. Women, I told you I really want you to pay attention. To continue smiling, woohoo, we're negotiating, let's smile. Current salary wisdom, in quotes. 
The books say delay salary talk until the time is right. This is all the salary negotiating books say. You know, until we agree that I'm a fit, I would prefer we put this off a little longer. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to get myself knocked out of contention because I don't really want to be eliminated before I get a chance to present my value. Guess what? That's bull. The recruiters aren't going to play that game. Salary is a significant point and they're going to they're not going to wait to see if you're a fit. So when they bring up salary, you be prepared to talk about it. If they don't, Everything is cool, it's all hunky-dory, you're gonna be presenting value, but you guys know now how to present value anyway, all the time. So, salary is a primary selection factor. There's no recruiter that's gonna tell you differently. Know your market rate. Now here's, a, here, this is important guys, when you go to salary.com, you go to bls.gov, that's a Bureau of Labor Statistics, bls.gov. Knowing your market rate is really, really important. Number one, you might think you're worth $100,000, but the market is paying $125. Or it might be paying $60. And you were, in your last job, I was making $100,000, so of course I'm gonna get at least $100, $115. Uh-uh, not if the market has shifted. And you should do your research and know this because you're just gonna shoot yourself in the foot when you walk in and make a demand that is absolutely out of line and this should have been kind of somewhat covered possibly, hopefully, in the uh, pre-interview, the first telephone screening interview, but it may not, and I hope it's not. I'd rather you get able to get in there and present your value, like, you know, I'd rather wait to agree that I'm a fit before, but the fact is, you need to know your market rate going in. That can be death if you're out of line with what the current market is paying for your position. And salary.com and bls.gov, you can drill down to your market, your region, your city, your state, everything you need to know. Know your Monday morning rate, and this is really meant for young people that, are, that might be watching and for, for college kids. Because, and by the way, whenever I say Monday morning rate, I always mean a cost of living calculator. Use, you can Google cost of living calculator and don't forget the cost of commute. Everybody forgets the cost to get back and forth from work, especially if you're using the bus, subway, tollways, whatever. Monday morning rate is this. I'm gonna show up at work Monday morning and I'm gonna be happy to be there because I'm getting paid what I need to get paid to make sure my life is happy. So that means don't just think about uh, rent and car payment and insurance. Don't forget Friday night partying and Saturday night partying. And oh, there might be Thursday night partying. Oh, and I wanted to go shopping <laughs> Saturday and maybe even Sunday. What's it gonna make you happy to show up Monday morning to go to work because you're not freaking out about what you spent. So you need to know what that Monday morning rate is. Um, don't ever tell them what you need especially women, please, don't tell them what you need. Tell them what you will accept. It's not necessarily the same number. Tell them what you will accept. It's really just, a, maybe it's semantics, it's just a good way of positioning yourself, but I really need 60 to make this job work. I really need 45,000 or I can't take this position. Oh, you're over a barrel now. They got you. You know, I'll take $60,000 for this. I'll, I'll do this for you. <coughs> Remember, you're, you're actually bartering your wages. You're, you're selling what you have. The only thing you have to sell is time and your skills, of course. Get paid for it. Salary negotiation. Mentally prepare yourself to get something extra. I mean, prepare yourself going in for that you're going to get something extra today. Ladies, prepare yourself you're going to get something extra. Did I say that enough times? Yeah. Be prepared to walk away. Ouch. And maybe you can't, so maybe this is not a reasonable recommendation suggestion, but you should be prepared to walk away. If it's not going to fit, is it good? I don't know. And I'm going to address how you can handle this in a second. Be creative about what you want, but also be cognizant of the economy. And I put that in quotes because I found that somewhere, and I think that's worthy of mentioning to you, but I'm also going to tell you too, you're not worried about the economy, you're not worried about the company, you're worried about you. That's your foremost, because guess what? They're only worried about them. And their, their job, any recruiter, any department manager, any hiring manager's job is to get the very best talent for the least amount of money possible. That's their rule. That's anybody in business. The very best for the least amount. Your job is conversely to get the very most for what you offer to that company. The hiring manager has a pre-approved salary range. So if they come in and offer you $35,000, I guarantee they can go to 40 right now without getting any approval. 
Everybody's got a five to $10,000 range, depending on the level of the position they can go to without going and getting approval. I mean, that's just a given. I worked with young, one young lady recently who went in and she was perfectly happy with the offer and, she, and I just said, no, I want you to establish precedent. I want you to go in and I want you to ask for this. And she was a little nervous. I said, look, you can always back up. If it doesn't go, you say, you know what, I'll, then I'll accept your offer. Thank you very much. Let's go to work. But she went in and she got it. And she asked for exactly 5,000 more. And there was nobody walking out and going to get approval and permission. It got approved on the spot on that desk. Offertory letter was made. Everybody out there has that. Consider asking for dollars. Ask for more dollars. Salary review. I'm going to come back to that. Title. Paid parking. Remember I said the very first thing, prepare yourself to get something extra. If there's no dollars, ask for a title. Try to get paid parking. Maybe consider memberships in associations, whatever. College debt assistance, advanced, advanced education, vacation, personal days, relocation expenses, bonuses. Let's look at salary re review real quick. So you got, the, you got the offer and it's not what you wanted. But darn, I really need a job or I really want to get into something. So you go ahead and here's what you do. You negotiate with them and say, look, I'll tell you what, I'll take the job, but I want to do a salary review in six months to discuss my productivity and what I'm bringing to the table. Now, it's incumbent on you during that six months, you really do a good job. And more importantly, you document it. You keep it down exactly everything you have done because in six months, what this is a way of saying, if this is accepted, a salary review, what you're basically telling them and what they're basically agreeing to is you're going to get a raise in six months. And if you didn't, you're risking everything. So maybe you'll spend that six months looking for another job. But I don't want you to do that. I want you to go to the salary review. So there is a way of dealing with taking less money than you want right now with a written it's in the written offertory letter that says, we're going to conduct a salary review in six months. And you are going to work your backside off to get all kinds of great stuff done. So when you walk in, they're going to go, I don't know how we ever lived without you before here. Salary conclusion, get it in writing. Obtain a formal written offer. Or if it's not forthcoming, offer to write an acceptance letter outlining the details as you understand them to be. You got to get it in writing, guys. Do not let that sneak slip past you. All right, guys, I'm ready to close this thing up. The information presented in this series was of necessity, edited for time. I've really rammed a lot of, through, a lot of information through in these five videos. Um, go to the book and pick up the rest of it. Read the job book. Go to rickgillis.com. I am available for some counseling based on my schedule. I, I do work with individuals. And uh, one more quote, stick to the process. Don't worry about the results. Stick to the process. The results will come your way. I was just watching Matthew McConaughey on something this week, and he said that, talking about movies and changing roles. And I thought, that's exactly what this is all about. Stick to the process. Stay true to yourself. The results will figure it out. It'll, it'll happen. One last quote for you guys from Calvin Coolidge. Nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not, nothing is more common than unsuc unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not, unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not, the world is full of educated failures. Persistence and, and determination alone are omnipotent to your success. Thank you very much.